I am Praveen Bhagwat, Chief Technology Officer and Co-Founder of Airtight. And on behalf of the entire Airtight team, welcome all of you. Good morning. And really excited to host you here for the second time. And the reason is you saw a sneak preview of our product, cloud-based Wi-Fi management, uh, last time. And the last six months, we've had a very exciting ride. A lot of new good stuff which has been built in the product. And hopefully, we'll get a chance to showcase some of that capability to you. And I think most importantly, I think we've been having a really you know, exciting ride uh, for the past you know, couple of years and hope to share some of that excitement as to why we see a great opportunity uh, ahead of us uh, in the marketplace and what are the key reasons why we believe there is a shift happening in the market and why we are very well positioned to, to ride the wave as well as be an element which is going to bring about some change in the way people think about Wi-Fi and, and the kind of capability and the value they expect from the <coughs> Wi-Fi infrastructure. So hopefully you'll get a sneak preview of some of that capability through our presentations today. And in, in a nutshell, we want to show you what's new, uh, what we are doing with 11AC, um, our kind of how we look at this whole managed service provider market evolve uh, in, in the coming years. Uh, we'll share some of our you know, vision, some of our strategy, our thoughts, our roadmap. Um, as well as we'll also spend a little bit of time today uh, showcasing our core security uh, heritage, the wireless IPS capability. What is it that's so unique uh, in, the, in the wireless IPS uh, product of Airtight? And hopefully, when you, when you walk out of the show at, at the end of two hours, uh, we'll all have a first-hand feel for, for, for what that differentiation uh, really is. But for me personally, I mean, being a technologist, I mean, I like to look for opportunities where you can innovate. And even though we have been in the industry for more than 15, 16 years now, I still see tremendous potential for, for innovation. And hopefully you will get a glimpse of some of the you know, innovative things we have done in the product and, and what's more there to be done uh, in, in, in this space. So with this background, I will tell you why I think uh, we are at a very exciting time. I think it's no doubt that Wi-Fi has become an absolutely basic necessity in our life. And to quote my own example, I know my kids, they can go without food for a whole day, but they can't go without Wi-Fi at home even for an hour. <laughs> so I think in the whole Maslow's hierarchy, I'm convinced that you know, if you've got Wi-Fi, you can go to Google, search for food, shelter, water, whatever you want, but that's where the life begins or will begin very, very in, 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 in a very short future from now. Now, the, another reason why I kind of wanted to bring this picture up right at the beginning this actually also nicely captures the human or market behavior in some sense. Because humans are never satisfied. Once their basic needs are met, they move on to demanding something more. And when you satisfy that, they want to demand something more. And if you look at the Wi-Fi industry evolution as a whole, you can see a very big parallel between Maslow's hierarchy and the, how the market is evolving. At the very basic layer, yes, we want speeds and feeds, no doubt about it. So the industry has gone from you know, 11 BGN to now AC, wave one, wave two, and that trend will continue. But very quickly, when the customers realize they've got more speed than what they really need, the real bottleneck is actually the internet pipe, which is coming into their facility. Quickly, they're gonna demand, hey, how am I gonna share that pipe across multi-users, different sets of applications? How do I prioritize my voice over you know, data traffic and so on? Once you solve those set of problems, well, the security becomes a concern. You know, can I keep the right guys on my network, keep bad guys out? Once you solve that concern, well, how am I going to manage my large setup? How am I going to handle the scale? And once you've solved that problem, well, the question becomes, what is the business driver? Why am I putting this investment in place? What value am I deriving out of it? So it's kind of exciting to see that very, every few years, even though we are delivering the same technology, the needs of the market are changing very rapidly. And the reason why I'm personally excited, because on the very bottom, the trend towards AC is going to cause everyone to upgrade the infrastructure over the next you know, three to five to seven years. But this coupled with the fact that market <clears throat> is demanding cheaper, faster, better, more value-enabling management systems means there is an opportunity to innovate and bring new solutions into the market. And I think that's the opportunity that Airtight is here to seize. So if you look at the way we have evolved as a company, we started off as a security overlay company first and built up the cloud management on the top. 
It's only recently, over the last three to four years, that you started building access capabilities. Now, when we are building access capabilities, we are being very, very brutally focused. We are not trying to be everything for everybody. We are focusing on a very specific market segment, large scale distributed. It could be a single enterprise which has you know, tens and thousands of uh, facilities scattered throughout the world, or it could be a managed service provider which has tens and thousands of customers they want to manage through a single console. So I think we have a product which can, ma which can kind of meet the needs of both the markets. Clearly, we are looking for people who have thin IT resources, who are dealing with a very large number of sites, small sites with anywhere between five to 50 APs each, have value for security, want a good value for their money, and finally, it is the applications which are driving their buying decisions. I mean, that's the market segment we are going after. And in the last wireless field day, we showed you how our multi-tenant cloud works. We also gave you a preview of our access features. Today, we are going to take you behind the cloud, how we are running the large-scale cloud operations. What are the tools, what are the degrees of automation we have built in? And the reason we think it's time to kind of showcase that, because I think we are kind of ready to serve the managed service providers market today. The tools that we built internally for our own use can now be used by MSPs to run their operations going forward. And I think that's a very, very exciting space to be in. And towards the end, we will also give you an overview of new features we have built in the access space, and also our WIPs heritage. What are the differentiating capabilities in our wireless IPS product? So hopefully you'll have a great show, seeing all of the capabilities across the spectrum. And finally, there are four key reasons why I personally believe we are ideally positioned to uh, make a very, very good play in this space. For a very large scale distributed management interface, you need four key capabilities which we have got. The folder based or hierarchical folder based management structure, the way we define templates and we are able to apply them across this folder hierarchy, the single sign on cloud services dashboard that uh, you'll get a sneak preview of, and finally, the degree to which we have made the entire WIPS configuration zero config and completely automated is amazing that you can scale it to thousands of sites. So with that background, I will invite Devin to come and introduce the theme of today's presentation, which is MSP6 at WFD6. Thanks, Devin. Hi, and welcome. Um, many of you know me, but for the ones who don't, uh, I'm Devin Aiken. I'm the uh, chief evangelist here at Airtight. And uh, welcome to uh, Wireless Field Day 6. So today we're uh, kind of showcasing uh, the, uh, the way we've built the product uh, around the managed services market. Uh, I know most of you, you guys are big fans of uh, uh, Gartner. So uh, when, when Gartner says uh, by, two <laughs> uh, by 2016 that uh, uh, we're going to see about 60% of the mid-market, and that's uh, certainly the, the biggest part of the market we serve, is a distributed, uh, large-scale distributed mid-market type customers is 60% of that market will be served by managed services by 2016. That's only two years away, right? Two, two and a half years away. 60%. That's humongous. And so any, any company that's not serving uh, managed service providers or not helping VARs of all sizes, from the smallest VAR, from a one-man shop to all the way to the telco, not helping them move into managed services and enabling that is missing the boat, really missing the boat. So. Uh, that's, that's what we've been focused on, is enabling uh, this. And in fact, in order to enable this, we've had to build ourselves into an MSP. This is very important. In order to understand the MSP uh, requirements, we've had to make ourselves into one, to have all the tools uh, and to, to understand all the pieces so that uh, VARs that want VARs or VADs or uh, telcos or the mom and pop shop wants to come to us and say, we want to be an MSP. We know exactly what to do to enable that. And they can do this with zero startup costs. That's very important. You know, instead of the, the typical scenario of a, a telco building out uh, an entire infrastructure, multiple servers, multiple uh, internet pipes, and things like this, that's a, you know, that's a very costly startup to get into the MSP world. They can leverage our cloud. They can leverage all the things that we've built. So there's some certain points that we want to get into uh, along these lines on the MSP model that, uh, that we've done. The first one is massively scalable provisioning. Massively scalable prov provisioning. So what does this mean? It, it means what uh, uh, Praveen was saying about the, f the first point, and I'll just kind of toss that to the side there. Um, the, fir the first point is that you know, whether we're serving one customer that has 10,000, 50,000, or 100,000 sites, no problem, literally, those numbers are real, 
uh, or it's a managed service provider that might have 10,000 customers, 20,000 customers, whether it's a, just a small number of sites or even a large number of sites, we can handle that. And you'll see that in today's demo. And we don't need the slide where we have the product, right? We can show you. It's not really the connectivity these days. Everybody has speeds and feeds, but it's what you do with the Wi-Fi, and Sean's gonna talk about that. The second point is multi-services platform. Multi-services platform, very important. It's not, it's not just about the, the connectivity. So everybody can do connectivity. Lord, if you can't do connectivity by now, after you know, 10 or 12 years in Wi-Fi, you just suck. So um, you know, everybody's got many, many times what's needed in the industry. You know, I can take a, you know, like I just tweeted, you can take a Toyota and race it against a, a Ferrari in rush hour traffic. Who wins? Nobody. Uh, because that's not the bottleneck. You know, if, if most branch offices or uh, corporate offices with APs have, uh, you know, a busy AP is 10 megs of throughput. I mean, you guys come from a, a variety of different environments, universities and hospitals and, and consultancies and so on. And if you go find your busiest AP and, and find how busy is it sustained over the busiest time, um, the peak busyness, let's say for you know, an hour, you'll find it's probably 10 megs. And, and if it's anything much higher than that, I'd be very surprised. I've done some polling of universities, hospitals to, to get that number. And in fact, that came, the busiest one I found is actually a branch office, one AP, 50 users, all day long during peak business hours was actually 10 megs. So if 10 megs is busy, and you know, even with 11N, people are, you know, these manufacturers saying, oh, we can do 400 megs, 400 megs. And now with 11AC, we can do 900 megs. I go, wow, 900 megs. That's only, what, 90 times faster than we need. So what do we really need? We need services. What can you do with the Wi-Fi? What services can you bring? What value can you bring? It's not just about speeds and feeds anymore. Everybody's got that, but what value can you bring over the top of it? And there's security and there's locationing and there's so many things. There's you know, the, uh, you know, all the, uh, the social Wi-Fi, there's a variety of services and you all know what they are. So that's a big thing. But of course, speeds and feeds, more speeds and feeds. So, you know, we'll talk about 11AC. Do we have 11AC? Of course we have 11AC. Thank you, whoever brought this up here. We've been, I've been faking it in the practice sessions every time. I've been, where's this 11 We have 11AC, yes we do. Um, we'll launch it here shortly. And, uh, and, and yes, it's fast, of course it's fast. Does, do our customers need this super ridiculously fast you know, AP? No, not really. Um, they just don't. Um, you like that? <laughs> I had to, like. Yeah, yeah. what? How do <laughs> yeah, you do feeds that? with a pH, yes. Hey Devin, can we mm -hmm. just get it out in, the, uh, out in the open? That has to be 10 times faster than the competitor, right? <laughs> Absolutely not, <laughs> absolutely not. It's 10 times, more than, way more than 10 times faster than any customer will ever need. How's that? So uh, is, it, is it fast? Yes, it's really fast. Do you want to know how fast? He's having a test soon. We'll be there. Uh, you know, so I don't have to say, oh, it's, you know, it's this fast or that fast versus a competitor. The numbers don't lie, and he'll, his test will prove out how fast it is. is. Does it have to be the fastest in the market? No. Will, is it? I don't know. Um, and I don't care because our customers um, you know, say that our 11N is super fast, and they're already buying that like crazy. The, la the next one, magic show presentation. Yes, magic show presentation. So Sean is gonna pull so, some, uh, some things right out of thin air. Um, and that's gonna be pretty cool. So he's, he's uh, uh, as you met last time, he's one of our senior systems engineers and he's gonna do some magic for us. And that's gonna be pretty cool. You asked last time for maximum security protection to talk about our WIPs, what, what makes it different? Well, you know, you hear all the time, WIPS is dead, WIPS is dead. Well, I'll tell you what's not dead. Security's not dead, and reporting's not dead, and compliance is not dead. All the things that automated WIPS at scale brings is not dead. It's alive and well, and it's very important. And if you don't have it, you're missing a very important uh, piece of the Wi-Fi puzzle. It is, in fact, in a, a crucial piece. And so it brings so many facets to the game. So you can say WIPS is dead. Well, the WIPS overlay market might be you know, um, on the downslide, but the things that the WIPS technology brings is very much alive and well. And we don't need so many slides because this is a must-see product. You know, we'll be showing you the product itself and giving you some, some slides, I mean, or some, uh, some demos of the actual products, the new stuff that's come out. And you're going to get to see all the, all the latest, greatest, and why we're enabling managed services and how we're doing that, as well as the large-scale distributed enterprise. So, uh, so I think that's, uh, that's pretty much it for me. That's it. All right. Thanks.